Hello James Bond lovers. As a kid I watched all these James Bond movies and yeah, I'm now pretty much collecting any scale that I feel like. <laughs> Originally I was thinking I'd just stick to 164 but if you hang around long enough in this diecast hobby you're gonna just end up with anything in any scale. So ideally these would have been 164 but I've come to realize Kyosho they have the same base on their 164 scale cars but they had to shrink all the models down in order to fit this base. That's the reasoning, I think, as to why Kyosho didn't make these things in 164. It's the packaging itself. Which is a real shame, because I think they would have sold a lot more of these if they were 164 scale. So, uh, let's take a look. We're going to look at two vehicles from the movie You Only Live Twice. The 2000 GT and the Gyrocopter. So, I remember this movie. It was about, like stealing satellites and stuff like that and it took place in Japan and the evil guy I think had a base inside of a volcano you know the stuff that pretty much Austin Powers copied all right so here are the other cars in the collection let me just pause this for well not you can pause it and uh, it does say here these are from 2006 so there might be some paint rash going on I will eventually hopefully get every one of these castings well just give me time you know I gotta find a good price uh, you'll see 399 yen. That means this thing was like $4 when it was new. So I always try to factor in the original selling price uh, as to how critical I should be in my reviews. The more expensive, the more critical. Alright, so I took a little time saving and took this off this plastic base for you guys. This one did come with this uh, little card explaining something about this car. Uh, there are only two of these drop tops made for this movie, so Toyota never made a 2000 GT convertible. These convertibles weren't even real, it's just a fake tonneau cover. You know, there was no actual convertible mechanism. So these were made specifically for this movie, and that's cool. That's the original poster, I guess, for it. And it's got the gyrocopter. Alright, so let's take a look at this die cast here. And this car was only driven by this female actor. She was one of the Bond ladies. Uh, Wikipedia tells me Akiko Wakabayashi yeah, was the name of the Bond girl in this movie. I, I don't know if that was the real person, actress's name or the character's name, so I apologize for that. All right, so I gotta get in further. This thing's so small. Okay, you'll see. Kyosho actually captured the general proportions, I think, pretty well. I gotta say, these little 172 scale cars are pretty good. Alright, there's Sean Connery himself. He was a pretty tall dude. Okay. Alright, let's take a closer look at this guy. This model, that is. Focusing, trying to focus. He's having a hard time. There we go. So, there seems to be like some sort of uh, badge there, probably 2000 GT. Let me see if the camera can focus so close. Nah, it's not legible. Can't really tell. And then, uh, being white paint, they had to lay it on pretty thick to cover up the casting. Uh, the protruding door handles paint to silver, so that's good. That's as good as you're gonna get, it, gonna get for a mesh wire wheel at this scale. It's got this little protruding bump, but no additional color, unfortunately. The front lights, though, nice. Plastic, you know, and then a real license plate, probably accurate to the movie car. Chromed bumper here, separate piece of plastic. But here the bumpers are just part of the casting, painted silver. Hood mechan latches there. And then you can see, yeah, some paint rash developing here. Alright, some rib details here. And then the windshield has, I think, silver paint going around it, yep. And then the wiper blades. I can actually feel a tiny ridge there, and it's painted black. So Kyosho has decent detail here, molded in, but just a black interior, but that's actually accurate to this movie car. And there, that is legible, 2000 GT, very good. Silver gas cap, antenna stub, uh, this side, yeah, pretty much the same. And then this one has painted taillights, which they're pretty small, so I guess that I can understand. I do like to see that it has a license plate though. And then these seem to be separate chrome pieces containing the rear bumpers. It's press fit together. Nice to say, see what it, the car is and then who made it. Just doesn't tell you when it was made. 
decent tire treads and the tires look pretty well sized for this time frame. So it's pretty neat. And I noticed now I got some grime here. Actual little blood there. Sorry, that's gross. Alright, I'm always making models. I'm always cutting myself and I always have paint on my fingers which I don't see until I start this video at four times magnification. So I apologize for that stuff. Let's put this up on the spin thing and we'll talk about this next one here. So I left this one in the packaging because I want you guys to see how Kyosho packaged it because it's got these delicate rotors. And there's a whole lot of story on this thing. So first it's called a gyrocopter. A gyrocopter looks like a helicopter but it's not. Well, an auto gyro is not a helicopter. These blades up here which are really well protected by this little blister, so that's smart on Kyosho's part. These blades don't spin, they're not powered. Okay, I apologize. They do spin, but they're not actually powered by the motor. They're only spinning because of the lift of the thing moving forward. The thing that's moving this thing forward is this propeller here, which is attached to an engine. And research tells me this thing is called a, a Wallace WA116 maybe? I'm not sure the exact model, but the the gyrocopter is made by a Wallace, and so there was a British Air Force pilot called Ken Wallace. He uh, he flew during the World War II. Later on, started his own little auto gyro company. He made like ten of these things, or maybe more. And this one was nicknamed Little Nelly, in for the movie itself. Uh, boy, you know I don't even know if I want to take this off the stand. I think I'm going to just leave it on. There is one screw there. Because uh, this this really is fragile here. Alright, so a little bit more. Uh, i got to talk about this person, Ken Wallace, because he's got a great history. Uh, he set 34 world records in these auto gyros. He flew the first, the longest flight. He flew across the British Isles, and he could have flown further. It's just that he ran out of land to fly over. He also became the oldest pilot to set uh, a world record, aged 81. He accidentally achieved the fastest climb to 3,000 feet in 7 minutes and 20 seconds, in an auto gyro that is. He also set a world speed record for these things at 129 miles per, 29 miles per hour, so almost 130 miles per hour at the age of 89 years old. So he was also the person flying this thing in the movie. So. I think that's really cool. In fact, let me show you these pictures here from the movie. So there we have Q and uh, Bond himself talking about all the th rockets and <laughs> thrusters and all the stuff that Q likes to jam onto vehicles. And then I guess this is Ken Wallace himself flying the thing. So I think it's really cool. All right. All right, so a nice little history there learning. I always just thought it was cool, you know, because when I was a kid watching this movie, I'd never seen a gyrocopter. I didn't even know what an auto gyro was. And actually, I didn't know what an auto gyro was until I researched this this uh, scale model here. Okay, so let's see. We do have two rockets on the bottom here, and then these little cluster rockets as well. And then I'm going to guess, yes, these four little things are probably additional rocket thrusters. And then you do have this engine here. Uh, I did actually pull up here on Wikipedia the Wallace uh, auto gyro stats and it's telling me this thing is around 11 feet long or 3.4 meters long uh, and then the empty weight is 116 kilograms or 250 pounds in that ballpark it has a fuel capacity of around 58 pounds or 26 kilos and is powered by a four-cylinder Wallace McCull McCulloch engine so McCulloch engines, I believe, are chainsaw engines. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So I guess Wallace probably tweaked one of these chainsaw engines. Or oh, maybe it's a lawnmower engine, actually. McCulloch. McCulloch. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing that. I can't pronounce anything. I, I barely speak English anymore. All right, anyway, so it's supposed to be a four-cylinder air-cooled, horizontally opposed flats, you know, engine with 72 horsepower. And then the main rotors here, they're supposed to be 20 feet or around 6.2 meters and uh, that's it I guess oh the maximum speed is 100 miles per hour although in that world speed record maybe he was flying downwards you know to hit 130 miles per hour 
and then it's supposed to be able to fly for two and a half hours and fly up to 3,000 meters or 10,000 feet is the service ceiling and that's it all right so I find you know all vehicles interesting so if you don't like auto gyros by now you probably left watching this video which is fine okay so a lot of talking there back to this thing we got this whole frame structure you know the tubes are pretty thin uh, I mean looking at the tip of a dental pick right so it's a pretty fragile and delicate looking model uh, the tires here are just plastic you know painted really nice though pretty concentric and then if you look at the graphics of this thing it's really well done uh, I mean the bottom is silver it's got it's got these tiny black lines and then the top is yellow even on the little rocket pod look at that and then look at the nose here sorry let me hit the focus again look at the concentric rings you know they managed to match them even though there's a top piece and a bottom piece mating here at this seam uh, the rocket tips have red on them there's a little landing gear here as well I think these are machine guns these little black th indications so it's pretty cool this propeller also spins so that's pretty nice yeah fragile there's only this one piece of plastic holding this rear section on so yeah I don't think you really want to drop this model too often even though it's plastic and stuff it still might break parts I, I really think these would be breaking first but all right then let's uh put this up on the spin thing with the 2000 GT and uh try to compare it to some other stuff so I do have a Kyosho 164 scale version of the regular road going 2000 GT and so they only came in coupe form so you'll see the white is different this is a much brighter white that's yellowed but it is possible this may have sat in someone's window for a while so that might be why it's a little discolored or yeah or just different you know production times and they that's the white paint they had at the time the Kyosho so I'm just looking back at the box here and I'm, I don't really see oh it is 172 scale right there right so that's the difference between a 172 and a 164 as far as the footprint goes Hmm. Now the 164 does actually have translucent red taillights, so that's a, an improvement that's available with the larger size. And then the wheels have a two-tone effect as well, and they have hollow openings, I think, between the, for the spoke holes. So, alright. And I naturally don't have any other variation of a gyrocopter to show, so that's just not going to happen today. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, if you like certain subjects, you're gonna have to leave a certain scale. There simply isn't. You know, 164 has the most subjects in miniature, I think. But unfortunately, they don't have it. These James Bond vehicles. So now I'm collecting 172s. Uh, it's not my intention to make a habit of collecting this scale. But I do know there are other pretty cool looking 172 scale models out there. So, can't rule out that possibility. Alright, well, for this uh, video, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it makes me want to go back and watch this movie. It was a cool one. I remember this movie as a kid. I probably watched it five or ten times on uh, public television. Alright, well, thanks for watching. And uh, keep it shaken, not stirred.